On this week's episode, we're joined by Andreas Robinson. Andreas grew up all over HRM and excelled from a young age in school and athletics. He focused on track and field and football and eventually went to prep school in the U.S. However, a severe knee injury suffered in the state championship of his final year eventually forced him to reevaluate his path in life, and after a short stint at university in B.C., Andreas made his way back to Halifax. After much consideration, he decided to attend St. Mary's University for business and play football there. Since high school, Andreas has been interested in creating some sort of social enterprise, and that is now becoming a reality. He is the founder and president of Infinitus Academy, and their mission is to empower youth, individuals, and communities to embrace their limitless potential. With graduation right around the corner, Andreas is excited to continue building Infinitus and take on any challenge in the way. Listen in as we go through it all. I was the same old me With the same old blues I was the same old me With the same old blues I was the same old Okay, we're back for another episode of Brand New View. I'm here with my co-host, Ben Brammer. How you doing, Ben? Very well, thank you. Good stuff. We're joined tonight by Andreas Robinson. How you doing, Andreas? I'm good. Ready to be here. Grateful. Looking forward to it. Very excited for you to join us tonight. You grew up all over HRM. Why don't you take us through that a bit? No, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I would say all over HRM because... Um, and, and as you, you talked a little bit about before, kind of pieces of the story, like um, not to get ahead of myself, but really um, including university, I've been to 10 different schools, right? So that's a, Got whole, me there. a whole lot, a whole lot of schools. And, and for the most part, right, it was... You might have of, Mark and I combined. I know, right? Even better, <laughs> right? Because but the transition was really a big part um, of kind of my process and has been. Um, and so, you know, I went to elementary and, and kind of school in Dartmouth and in Halifax as well. Um, but kind of the moving around was a big part of uh, what shaped me into kind of, I guess, who I am and, and a lot of those things, right? Being able to, um, you know, transfer or, or move from school to school, um, obviously in Halifax and Dartmouth, but then, you know, where I went to high school in the States type of deal. So a lot of the transitions um, for myself definitely were a big thing. Nice. Okay. So you mentioned going through Dartmouth and Halifax. That was elementary, junior high, high school, where you bopping back and forth. And so it's kind, kind of, of moving, a, like kind of a little bit of both. So for elementary, um, more so, uh, and then basically junior high, I ended up that was kind of the the first pause, if you will, um, where I went to Gorsbrook Junior High, right across from the Ida UK, you know, um, and and did all of junior high there. The Bears. Hey, the Bears. Actually, my grade nine year, we we won the uh, the basketball. What is it, like the city. City regionals. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So the Bears were real. You there know, you it, was, it was a good time. Um, That's hilarious. And I did a year at Citadel um, okay. before transferring and going to school in the states. So more so um, in the Halifax, I guess, for that part of the the journey. I'm wondering uh, what kind of interest did you have growing up, moving all over the place. I assume there'd be a few things, maybe scholastically or outside of school. Yeah, I think um, school was definitely. I guess two parts to that, really. Um, There's definitely kind of the school focus because uh, I would say for the most part, like on my mom's side, her whole family, literally both my grandparents, both my aunts, my uncle. Um, so everyone except her are all teachers. So it was always school first, academics first, regardless of anything else. Right. So was schools was, was very much so pushed. Um, but then on the other side of things, um, even I guess at a, at a younger age, but I was a high level athlete. Um, so sports, um, kind of, I guess, Canadians, I think we played kind of like all sports initially, right? So I definitely played like, well, soccer or like football, you know, growing yeah. up. Um, but then, you know, uh, focus a lot more on like track and field and, and, and American football. Um, and I think those really were, especially as I got older, um, took up a, a bulk and, and probably the main part uh, mm. of my life in that sense, right? Like I ended up playing for football for... 12 years right and and that was a big part of you know why i wanted to go to the states mm-hmm. um to, to continue competing at those levels um so i'll say that that would probably be the main the main focus um through the transitions right yeah. and the, 
<clears throat> and kind of what you're talking about with having to start over. Mm. Um, you know, the athletics, I mean, obviously the academics and stuff, but the athletics were always kind of that fail safe, if you will, mm. right? Being able to, I know I'm good at sports, so whenever we're going outside to do stuff at recess or lunch and we're playing football, I know I'm getting picked and I know my team, you know what I mean? We're going to have yeah. fun type mm. of deal. So it was always um, one of those things. You know, you can break down some of the barriers yeah. um, and make a lot of new friends that way. And, you know, kind of thinking of a story as well, just, just, just where you're talking about it. Um, one of the schools that I went to, I literally was only there for, I don't even know, it was, might have been a boundary thing, but I was literally there for like a minute, like a hot minute. Um, didn't even really know that many people, but we played football at lunch um, on like the soccer field. And soccer fields are the biggest fields going. They're huge. But like literally, um, I've been to the school for like maybe two weeks. And every, I was also, I was also the only black kid in the school or one of them. But everyone knew me because of football, because of like every time we went out, my team would win and we'd do well. And they're like, oh, they're Andreas. And, but it wasn't Andreas at the time, actually. It was Andre 3000. Like, nice. proper, right? Yeah. So just kind of slid the nickname in there. Now but, I know what I'm calling you for the rest <laughs> of the episode. <laughs> you know, but, but, but that was kind of a, a really big piece, I guess, in terms mm-hmm. of kind of building the camaraderie or kind of going through the transitions. I, I like that you mentioned that it was your, your fail safe. It was kind of your safety net. It was always there. It's the one consistent, yeah. right? sport you can always that's why it's so important i find athletics at a young age it teaches you so much it it really helps harness so many things it's incredible and and as you mentioned right it's 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 what you leaned on like it was there for you same i mean i can speak for ben sort of but definitely speak for myself sports was really the main focus growing up it was like Mm -hmm. school's there because you need to do it and that's part of the package but it was sports that i was defining myself by or looking forward to and and you say you know going out and playing football on the big soccer field i exactly remember and i i grew up right next to my elementary field school which is right next to a a soccer field and we'd always be playing football on there during recess and before lunch and after school Mm -hmm. and everything and that was really yeah like that was how you kind of made your friends and you kind of had that safety where if you were good at sports you knew you were always going to kind of be accepted in in a certain way Mm -hmm. Honestly, no, and just kind of hearing how you kind of phrase it, right? I think that's that's a big piece to a lot of the elements, right? You're talking about sports teaches you so much. Mm. It really does. I, and I mean, I think for myself, you know, having the opportunity, and I mean, not not veering off the, the script too much, but, you know, having that opportunity to, to play multiple sports, you know, at, at, a, at a variety of levels, um, but to have kind of the, so like with track and field, that's an individual sport. 100 meters and 200 meters, that's like just me. Obviously, we, you know, when we get into the, the relay teams, have to have that. But, you know, kind of the mentality of like, this is me on my own, like very much so um, isolated and motivated in that sense. And then on the complete other side of the spectrum, like with, with American football, you, you have 12 well, in Canada, 12 players in the yeah. States, right? 11. And like for myself, even, even growing up, um, so as an example, like, um, what in high school I played on under 19 team Canada so the national team um for running back and like kind of went both ways but even in that being said like you could be the the best running back in the country but if your O-line misses a block on one play you're not going anywhere right. it really mm-hmm. doesn't matter right or you could have a great you know the, one of the best p- quarterbacks in the in the conference but if you don't have receivers or if you don't have an O-line like you can't do anything oh yeah right so it's kind of like it, it was a huge part of uh, I think my learning process too to kind of be like okay well here's what the one you know the individual sport is and then here's a team sport and like you really need every member on the team so like for me that was a huge part of kind of the like my overall growth process mm-hmm. um, was being a part of that environment right because I really came to appreciate like the value of every single person um, and some of my best friends like even to this day are, are, are some of the old linemen and some of my teammates right because of not just the you know the overall importance but like it's that camaraderie it's that um, protection in this case protection <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, very yeah. much so yeah. protection you need that you need that right but it's it's kind of all those um, those pieces you learn how to communicate you learn how to um, you know share share everything yeah you learn how to learn as a, as a group you learn how to communicate as a group you learn how to win as a group you learn how to right. lose as a group i mean you handle adversity as a group you it's everything it's everything and just kind of bringing it back to like what y'all were talking about before right i think even even um that's one of the funnest 
things in, in hindsight after stepping away um, from football or from kind of sports being a main focus or focal point to really just focusing on the business like so much um, of those elements that have been ingrained so much mm. of those ideologies so much of those um, habits and mm. routines mm. really have been the kind of coming back to that the rock mm. it, it really has uh, made up the foundation to put me in that position right transitioning through all the schools yeah. you know that was part of the resiliency that yeah. was part of doing that you know being able to mm. go um that's even a just, great point just, talk, just talking to my yeah. sister last night because she's getting into track right but like i all, all the training that you have to do to make sure that on game day regardless of what the rest of the team is like you're in the best spot that you can be right right uh, so that kind of speaks a lot of volumes because I mean, you can do so much with it yeah right? so school. many transferable skills it's yeah. incredible I mean, if someone were to ask me where I've learned something, there's a good chance I learned it playing sport. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, you're a good leader. Like, what, what makes you a good leader? Well, sports. You're a good communicator. Yeah, I had to speak to 17 other guys. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you go through all those those things that you, you start checking off about yourself, and you're like, geez, I learned these all in a, a hockey rink or baseball diamond or soccer pitch or wherever, right? Like... I, I find it so cool. Yeah. So you did uh, the one year at Citadel and then headed, was it prep school that you went to yeah. in the States? So Phillips Exeter. Um, I did the one year at Citadel grade 10 and then went down there to, and basically like their whole, the whole system was so different. Um, you know, Which state were you in? So it's in New Hampshire. So okay. kind of literally where it is. Um, so Phillips Exeter is in the town of Exeter. Like it's that mm -hmm. kind of a old school vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if y'all do any shopping, but it's like 15 minutes from Kittery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or well, 45 minutes from Boston. We know people that <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. So kind of in, the, in that area. Um, and it was different too, right? Because I did, you know, did 10 up here, but then went down there and, and um, as is kind of the norm, but you redid grade 10. Yeah. Did 11, 12. Um, and it was so different, just, you know, like a big class. I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it, but like a big class, a big class. It was 11 or 12 students. Really? Right, and you sit. I was expecting like 1,100 when you said 11 no, there. No, no, <laughs> like a right. big class. That's what I mean. Literally, the classes were, were small um, because the whole focus of every single class, so I'm talking about like all of the language courses, all of the sciences, the maths, everything. You sat around an oval table, um, and everything was discussion based. King wow. Arthur. You know what I mean? Like the professors were just facilitators, which was which was night and day from what I was used to. Coming Seriously. from a class of like thirty students and you can just I'm getting just, told. You know what I mean? Or you can You're get by with it. I know this stuff, I don't need to pay attention. Right. There was there was none of that because mm. you're stand you know what I mean? You're sitting across the table from everybody and, and you have to be able to um, not just talk about the work, but like articulate it from substance it has to come from somewhere and then yeah. people will challenge you and you have to be able to you really have to hold all of yourself sudden. accountable right so it, it, it was so different um especially because the professors like their job their role literally they track discussion and so i went from you know being a an a student here and i could get away with being a class clown so mm. i went down there and i was like no i'm not really trying to talk i'm trying to take in this group dynamic and like pay attention to what's going on so it was it was cool not for my grades, not for the first year. I had to figure out what that learning curve was, but it was it was so different because the whole style of education really put the student in the driver's seat. Like whatever your learning style is or was type of deal, you're able to play to that strength. So it was it was so transformative because the whole experience of the school, right? I mean, it's an environment where um, you have like the best and the brightest and it's extremely international. So students from are from all over the world. But at the same time, you have not just kind of that peer group, but then you're surrounded by, um, you know, the professors or other people that also live on campus, right? And, oh, and, okay. and, and so it was very much like a university feel. Like we yeah, had yeah. Saturday classes type of. So it was oh, wow. Wait, shirt what? and ties. Like it was so different. School doesn't happen Saturday on the weekends. Do you, know, listen, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. And so I had to get back up and go to class. So it was, but like all those things were being thrown at me, mm -hmm. right? And, and then so it was like, same ways, okay, well, school is different, not so much the writing, but threw myself even more so into the sports and had to go through what that balance was because it was like sports are still going very well 
and I'm doing what I did before, but like school's not going as well, right? So it was it was a lot of um, trial and error, trial mm-hmm. by fire, but a lot of learning, mm-hmm. um, which I think you know that. To be honest, you know, uh, for me, um, one of the big things I rock with is I think you need to just jump in and you're either going to sink or swim. Um, mm-hmm. And that whole experience <laughs> was just jumping in. So it was uh, very informative, very impactful. Mm-hmm. I can. I mean, we've only been talking for almost 20 minutes, but I can tell like you're someone who embraces a challenge. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're definitely not sinking. <laughs> So I see you floating in the deep end with a uh, pina colada in hand. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you, uh, ra- is it Philip Exeter or Phillips? Phillips. Ex- Phillips Exeter. Okay. I mean, you can say Philip, I guess. Phillip, Phillips. Um, someone might get mad. I wouldn't necessarily hate that. Phillips Prep Exeter. school down in New Hampshire. <laughs> um, so you're there for the, the three years and um, with the different type of learning, the discussion-based um did you find that you grew in any any ways when you embraced that type of learning? Yeah. No, I mean, in the whole, um, I would say the whole experience of going down there um, and, and being exposed to the fact that, like, there's other ways of learning. Like, I guess to ground you with, a, I'm a visual person, so to ground you kind of with an anecdote, um, being in a math class, and, like, I like numbers, especially in business, I like money, right? So all this stuff, like, it makes sense, but, like, one of my weaknesses was geometry, and as it happens, that was like the foundation for all the maths that we did at Exeter, um, which sucked for me. Yeah. Not yeah. everyone else, right? But um, basically going down there and in the math room and, and using like their um, their style of education, basically one of the things that I really took in, and it might have been first or second year, um, but around the room, basically, we, we all had like the math book or math problems. But instead of it kind of being taught at you and say, okay, well, this is the this is the formula. This is what you have to follow the process. This is how you get the answer. Here's the problem. Figure out how you can solve it. Come up with a way that works for you and makes sense. And then bring it back to the class. So you'd literally go around and we're looking at the problems. And you'd see two, three, four different ways to solve the problem. And the professor saying, okay, well, pick which way makes the most sense to you and practice that. So like just even that was was night and day because it wasn't one. I'm and going it, to school and on it Saturday. It might not even if this, be two. If that <laughs> like I am in school Saturday all day if this is the way of learning, right? And, and because like you you buy in a lot more because it's not so much like I don't get it and it doesn't make sense. It's like okay, well, why don't you get it? Yeah, you know what I mean. And so it, it was on on a lot of levels. It was kind of like that. You know, it was a lot of the support. You know, and and for me that was I think one of the biggest things that I saw, which was it really does, because the school's from grade nine to grade twelve, but they have like a a post grad, so like a grade thirteen year, um, for people that are, for example, if you want to get into Harvard or Yale or some of the other Ivies, because it's an Ivy League feeder, um, but you need like a little bit of a boost for for a couple grades or whatever the case is for a course. Mm-hmm. So then you'd spend a year kind of similar like in Ontario to re up those grades and then get accepted. Um, but like basically, regardless of what your foundation is coming into that if you're there from the ninth grade to the 13th grade 12th grade like you're in a place where the environment is um empowering you right because it's a place where like literally whatever your interests are aside from you know having to be in the classes six days a week um but whatever your interests are like there is an opportunity for you to explore that whatever your passions are there is an opportunity for you to explore that right like to 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 the extent that um you know you don't get to see it around here right and, and it was a, a whole um, switch in literally thought processes and just kind of um, in perspective really it shifted um, my lens and I think kind of changed the narrative in a way because you know the school in itself even like in the first day within the first like month um, being exposed to like the whole range of like the socioeconomic spectrum and I mean the whole range not just oh broke or not a lot of money all the way to like some money like south end like multi-billionaires yeah. like a roommate of mine you know owned a shipyard type of thing like you know people going to to sports games to, just to watch the home team lose yeah <laughs> that kind of money you know what i mean yeah. so uh, <laughs> not used that to that is so funny when you process that in your head <laughs> so it was just like okay well hold on there's so much there's so much here like I, you know what i mean just wanted to soak it up because it's like <laughs> these people are no different than you or myself Right, it comes from what their background is, what foundation do they have? But then all of a sudden, you're in this environment where, aside from the foundation, whatever the supports are that you need, 
you get them. Mm-hmm. And that's that's not really how the rest of the world works, right? Mm-hmm. And so to see what that actually looks like um, in an environment and to see how that plays out um, with peers, with people from literally all over the world, like to watch a discussion of this is these are my beliefs and I'm somebody from Israel born and raised having a conversation with somebody from Lebanon born and raised. Like what what's, what's that? To, to watch that play out in the classroom, right? It was uh, an impactful experience, but you know, it was interesting every day. Yeah, sounds beautiful. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I it would sounds incredible. Much rather educational system. Like I'm jacked up about school. Life. So you, uh, what did you do after the three years down there? So basically, um, what did I do for three years? No, basically. So my my game plan in going down there, um, a big part of it was you know I wanted to, the focus was go NCAA. So as I mentioned, right, track and football or track and American football were big parts uh, of, of a lot of things that I was doing. Um, so the focus was getting down there. And, and actually the way it played out, so as I said, as I said um, heading into my senior year, I was on the under-19 Team Canada team. Um, and we did well, like one gold. So we beat the USA in Texas. So nice. super dope. Um, what position did you play? So running back running, on Team Canada. Back, right. Um, and then, so yeah, heading into senior year, so playing both ways, running back, uh, defensive back, um, athlete, I guess, you know, all over the place. But no, like the whole thing was, um, you know, it was going well and kind of the focus very much so was on, t- on like staying in the States. Um, and then like very first play, very first play at a state championship game, I tore my ACL. Oh, and that no. was like my only fear ever, period, like of life, only fear. Um, but at the same time, like I... Since junior high, something that I've rocked with is, like, everything happens for a reason, like, regardless of whatever it is. Um, for me, it was more so, like, a a motto that I took on because, like, uh, you can't live with regrets, right? People at the end of their life have a lot of regrets, and, and, and it eats them up, right? So, for me, it was, like, well, make a point of having no regrets from an earlier age. Um, so, I was like, okay, well, I need to, f- I've been saying this shit, you know what I mean, for time. All of a sudden, like, you know, this is my biggest fear, and it happened on the one of the arguably you know one of the biggest um games of my career so it was like what the fuck am i have to do with this you know mm-hmm. what i mean like what does this mean for me because you know I, academically like, i was fine right and athletically i was at the top of my level and had the offers that i went down there to get but then i was like okay so now what am i gonna do because i'm in a position where i, I can't even finish the game because it's the first play but i'm not gonna be able to walk like i don't know about running like like a lot of what a lot of question marks Right. And I was in the States. So for me, it was it was a, a big unknown period, if you will, right? So I had to literally get surgery, got it in the States. Um, was it a full tear? So it was full tear. Oh, God. It was a full tear. Weak. And, I, and I had it done in the States. Um, so I wasn't even, like, I was isolated. So mm. I wasn't with the friends and family. Um, and even in the, in the school, basically kind of like, and this is the fun part of the story, but... Um, Literally, because I couldn't, like, my dorm, it's like old school. So, like, the dorm room that I lived in was, like, spiral staircases. Old school. Wow. I couldn't crutch up spiral staircases. No. So, I had to stay <laughs> in the infirmary for, like, a week. So, I was even more so, like, what the fuck? Mm. Like, I'm not well, not going to class. I was okay with, you know what I mean? But mm. for the most part, I was literally isolated, like, on my ones in a hospital bed, like, just thinking. What am I going to do, right? So that was kind of the piece where I was like, all right, well, I can't let my circumstances limit me. Um, you know, and coupled with some of the things that were going on, you know, I really was trying to dig in to figure, like, what is this next step going to be? Um, and it ended up turning out to be Simon Fraser, which is, you know, out in uh, out in Vancouver um, mm-hmm. on the West Coast. And I'd been out there just literally to fly through the airport, but I'd never really been to the West Coast or anything like that. So of the offers that I still had, I was like, all right, well, I don't really want to stay in the States. Um, so I never been to the West Coast. It's like, let's see Vancouver. And they're still playing NCAA football and stuff like that. So I was like, cool, let's do that. So went out there with the plan on redshirting one year, which is like basically taking a year off um, because I had the time to let you know the knee heal and everything like that. Anyways, heading into spring camp. So after taking the year off, um, and, and practicing, taking all the reps, doing that stuff. Um, tweaked my knee, and I was just, like, talking to the doctor. Like, it, it shouldn't be getting tweaked like that. Basically, did some tests, whatever the case is. And he's like, yeah, like, your knee didn't heal from the first surgery. So run that back one time. Your knee didn't heal. He's like, so basically what happened is because the American system 
and no shade, but just facts, you know? The American system is very aggressive um, throughout most of the things that they do. Um, and so basically they rushed my rehab. Like I was in rehabbing the day after my surgery type of deal. Um, probably so, shouldn't have fully weight bared for six to eight weeks. You know what I mean? So, it, and, and so like it wasn't I work with knees. Yeah, true. He does, yeah. Right. So, and, and it was kind of like the small things, right? I wasn't doing too much, but it was like in the small things I was doing too much, mm-hmm. especially for the ligament. Um, and for myself, I did everything to the T was very diligent. It's like everything to the max. Because I'm like, this is my body. Like, my body is my temple. So if you're telling me this, cool. I have faith in you, right? And so I was pretty devastated to be like, I put all this work in when I knew that I was going to have a year to, to come back, train, do my thing. And now I got to figure out what that looks like, right? So um, spent a year at Simon Fraser uh, and, and then found that out. So it's like, nah, I'm going to have to come home to, to Scotia and take a semester off and get knee surgery here because... I mean, you do some knee stuff, right? So, mm. you know, like, we have some of the best knee surgeons, period, Definitely. here. So. Shout out to Stanish. Shout out to Stanish. Yeah, Dr. Stanish is the best. I would, I would say a big difference is it's hard because you don't want to generalize. But at the same time, the American system, they, they, they view you as a number and a check mm-hmm. coming through. Whereas in Canada, I feel they care a bit more. You're not, you know, they're still getting paid per surgery. Mm-hmm. But it's not... The end all be all. They they ultimately care more about your well being than their back pocket. So we're back in Halifax after a little stint at Simon Fraser, and uh, kind of at a crossroads now. Kind of at a crossroads. Yeah, no, it, it really was. Um, because I didn't expect at all to come back to Halifax, um, and basically, yeah, no, where coming back for the surgery where that put me. Um, like my headspace was I'm going to come back here, take a semester off, um, and then go back out to Simon Fraser and, you know what I mean? Get back to business and take care of everything. Um, but kind of in the middle of all this or while that's happening, I mean, Infinitus, um, or the work, you know, that I've been doing, like I'd started doing that when I was at Phillips Exeter. Um, but the challenge was that like, I couldn't do any of that outside of like coming home on breaks right so it's like just before summer break march break type of thing um which you know started off just talking to like you know young kids about like role models mentors starting to see themselves like their own brand right but i couldn't scale any of that because i was away Mm -hmm. um so that was kind of going in my head and then when i came home having some of those conversations with the coaches and things like that because i've been away for four years for the most part, like I, I wasn't up here, right? Literally, it was just breaks. Um, so it's like I haven't seen. What about f- summers? Did you train partial summers here, or? but like had to go back there for for training camp? Yeah, I don't know. Um, and wouldn't wouldn't want to spend the most of the summer here, but kind of in that, yeah, it was just kind of like okay, we're well, starting to figure out like what is that, right? I've been away for a while. Um, I don't know, you know, I was starting to kind of feel. A little different and at the same point um waiting for the surgery which was what in the fall um ended up coaching football at auburn just to you know pass the time the the auburn high auburn high yeah auburn high, you know. not auburn university not like, auburn university did i speak to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah nah but over over the bridge right and so it was you cool. guys both saw my eyes that was hilarious <laughs> but i was, was like <laughs> i was just about to bash them <laughs> No, so it was cool because it was, you know, it was getting back into it, right? Getting back into into the sports and back into the coaching element. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was good because it was kind of like, okay, well, can't be running the other stuff. You know, not going to be out there, but I'm still around the stuff. It's, it's, you know, it's still in the football frame of mind, but having fun. Um, and getting, you know, to be able to be home and those kind of things. But it was like literally a phone conversation um, with one of my coaches out there. And he was just like, like, all right, well, you need to come back and like... Like, what's your plan? Like, what are you doing? Um, and it really wasn't until, like, I had that conversation. Um, and I'm sure you can both relate to, like, you, you when you're, you put, like, a little bit of thought, but you're, it's more so, like, you're feeling something is different, mm. but you haven't thought too much about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it was, that was kind of where I was until I had a conversation with him. He was just like, all right, well, like, what are you doing? If you stay home, it's not a football decision. Like, you, you come back out here, like, you'll get the training, you'll go to the league, like, you'll be good. If you come home, it's not the same quality of football. Like it's very different. Um, if you stay home, it'll be a, it, it's a family decision. I was like, it's a family decision, huh? 
<laughs> okay. I don't know that I'm going back out there, right? So I really changed my perspective like in mm-hmm. that moment to where I was like, okay, well, like maybe this is not a football decision. You know what I mean? What is that next step? Um, you know, because I was kind of feeling that that strain of not being able to do the infinite stuff and not seeing the family like my, I guess to speak to the family element, like I have a little brother um, who's now nine and a little sister who's um, 13. So like at the time, like young, mm-hmm. right? like the first steps type of young. Um, and, and not, and not being around for a lot of that stuff and, you know, you know, pull on the heartstrings a little bit. Right. So miss those things. Um, so that was kind of like the, 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 what kind of precipitated coming back because I really didn't want to, or didn't, I mean, didn't expect to, um, but literally, yeah, played it like that, had the surgery, was coaching football. Uh, some of the CIS teams were like, oh, you're still home. What are you doing? (laughs) Reached out, um, and ended up. You know, signing with uh, with St. Mary's because they're going to cover the stuff and, and the business school really, uh, the dean of the business school was, was a big piece of that. Shout out to Pat Bradshaw. Um, but very socially oriented and focusing on like entrepreneurship, you know, social entrepreneurship, but like community impact, yeah. which is everything that I rock with. So the coaches finessed a meeting um, before I, you know, commit or anything. They're like, oh, go meet the, go meet the dean of the business school. Like, you'll like it. All right, I'll do it. But a great meeting um, and really just aligned with everything, right? So, like, I'd been away and, and where we talked about um, Philip Sexter before, right? Very unique climate, very uh, unique and small atmosphere where, you, you know, you have the ability to engage with the professors on a one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one of the pieces, you know, in terms of the education, right, especially if you're interested, it's not just having a conversation in the classroom. Like, I live with everybody. So, we're having a conversation on the path, in the dorm, or whatever the case is, right? Like, those things continue. Um, and it's not it's like all, my obviously kind of school. I tell you, like that's the only reason I went to school was to talk to people, right? And and it definitely was not all education based conversations. No, right? <laughs> it was social hour every hour for me, <laughs> you know. But but having those, having the having the ability to have those kind of conversations, um, and so it was so different. And then going to you know Simon Fraser, where there's like forty thousand kids. And was no diss. There's nothing wrong with it, um, but it's a very different feel, um, and especially like for myself. It was like, you know, I know, I have always known, like, I'm going to be in business. Like, that's why I chose business um, for the foundation of, you know, business mm-hmm. and kind of the mindset and those, those pieces. But it was like, you know, at Tom and Fraser, at like, the bigger schools, for the most part, you're, it's back to that kind of number piece, mm. right? So regardless of how smart you are, like, the system of education, the institution, and I'm trying to keep it without jumping, you know, to taking any shots or anything, but, like, in the general sense, like education is, is much so like you're a number. Doesn't matter what your learning style is. Um, you have to come into the system and understand how the system needs it. And then you go through and get your grades. And after going through a system where I'm like, like this is the feat. Like historically, Exeter is the feeder to Harvard. Our rival who were better than, I'm going to say it always. <laughs> Andover is our rival. We're better than them. Uh, Andover just, sucks. Andover sucks. That's yes. Right. Nice show. <laughs> But, like, um, after going through that, like, historically, it's the feeder for those things, right? So, it's a very unique dynamic and a very different culture. So, it's, like, shifting from that and then going to not just, like, a public culture, but, like, just a generic school that is just, like, it's great to come to school. And, like, you know what I mean? But, like, schools, it's very intangible. Like, you're going to be successful because you graduate from here and you have all these things. Yeah. It's, like, I've already been through that. So, like, what am I actually going to benefit from being in this environment? Like, outside of sports, outside of those things, like... Is the relationship like is the conversation with the professor? If I'm not having that because the, school, the class is 400 kids, and it's generic shit, like that's of no use to me. Yeah, but it was like on the other that hand, is so well said. Oh my god, honestly. But it was like I oh, just like <laughs> fell in. Like, I was in a trance just staring at you right now. But but that's the challenge with with the, that's why I said I'm not trying to jump too much on the, on a tangent because that's you know where where a piece of the business comes from. But like that's a big challenge with education. So it's like smoot on the other side of things is like. Um, no, it's not super elite, uh, you know, and maybe in the global sense of, you know, how much research they're creating or how much content or how, um, prestigious their professors are in terms of like their industry experience, whatever, whatever. Right. But what you look at, and at least for myself, like SMU is a school that I don't even know how many students it is. Not a lot. It's a small campus. Um, but it's, it's the other side of the field, right? So it's a place where you have, literally as much access as you want to those professors to those teachers i mean you have to put in the work and those kind of things but for me to spend i guess it'll be like three and a half years graduating like i legitimately know 
everybody at the school. Not like the students and stuff like that, but like I went there with the intention of I'm here to build the foundation of my business. This this is a place where you know I can come back and like this is gonna give me the best personal but professional foundation. Mm-hmm. So that I you know I I know I'm graduate. I'll know like you know the old dean but the new dean of the business school all the way through you know all the faculties like the president of the school vice president like that kind of stuff like it's a place where you can get that kind of access if you put in the work or have those conversations because like the end of the day school in in the system but like it's just about and you can speak to this right it's just about who you know it's no different than sports right Mm -hmm. networking and those kind of things how you leverage the relationships how you communicate um and when when a lot of people go to the I guess it, what it ends up being is you're a small fish in a really big pond and you don't know what you're going for, right? So I'm at a big university and I can have the fun part, but I don't really like school or I'm not really sure what I'm interested in or like my parents did this and that or whatever. So people just kind of follow, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, well, you look to your left and right and like, oh, well, Fall they, they look like they know what they're doing. Right, yeah. So I should probably do that too. Yeah. Right? And, and so for me, it was kind of like, all right, now I got to figure... You know, I'm, I'm here for a reason, you know, and I'm taking that step away from football as the focal point. Still, you know, still was pursuing it as a, a heavy piece. But it, even even then, you know, I, I stepped away from it two years ago because, like, it literally became my Achilles heel to where a lot of opportunities were, you know, constantly coming and, and opening up. And I could not say yes. I couldn't be like, oh, I want to do this with Infinitus. Yeah. Or people want to bring, bring us out here to have an engagement or do something. And I couldn't say yes because football was... 40 hours a week, all the training, and I'm still doing school, and these other things, right? So, that, that was a big piece of coming back, but then at the same time, I had to step away, so. Yeah. And that's when, well, I think we could probably get into Infinitus now. Let's uh, let the people know what it's all about. Yeah, okay, quick plug, pitch, you know? So, Infinitus, which literally means limitless and boundless. So, that's Infinitus means limitless and boundless in Latin. Um, which is the reason why it had to be the name of the brand because um, of everything that we've talked about, right? So literally the mission, my mission, but the brand's mission is to empower youth, individuals, and communities to embrace their limitless potential. So like big statement, pulling it back a little bit specifically um, as a foundation, that means we foster emotional intelligence. That's what our focus is. So focusing on fostering emotional intelligence specifically looking at transitional periods so or periods of change so dealing with those things so in the digital age changes like that every day right oh, yeah. doesn't matter what it is um so especially um i guess just the grounds right but just even the easiest one is like you know if you're looking at a youth from rural china what is the transition like for her to come to school in an urban city or, or for her to come here to canada it's a whole lot of transitions from the culture from the academic system from so on and so forth, mm-hmm. right? So from that piece, that's, that's kind of like the, I guess, the head statement for the for the brand, but um, kind of the pieces of what we do and like to, to super distill it is, is, you know, events and training and learning. Um, and so events would be like, you know, mentoring. So one-on-one, I got called into a school actually last year to do one-on-one mentoring with a, with a student in junior high for the year, um, which is great, but literally just, just, just kind of validating the element of, the stuff that was going on um, in in his life, the school, the guidance counselor called us in. She felt like they, you know, they needed some more support that they were not able to provide um, because we focus on those elements, right? So like our pillars, our identity, resiliency, leadership, and mental health, right? So how that plays out into the events is whether it's mentoring or speaker series, workshops, summits. So I'm saying like you know, one on one all the way up to two hundred plus. So like the the Sobe School of Business, or I mean, you both know how uh, universities do like welcome weeks. Yeah. So the business school paid us. They contracted us on to run their welcome week session in the fall and in the winter. Nice. So all incoming business students, we transition them in. So like talking about intercultural leadership, identity, self-advocacy, um, what those things look like in a intercultural and in, in a diverse environment. So maybe leadership doesn't mean talking. Maybe it literally means holding space for somebody else to talk. And maybe it means talk a little bit more, right? So kind of like, but challenging them to change the narrative. Um, like and shout then, out changing the narrative. Yeah, shout out all around. <laughs> Sobe School, everything. Just shout out Andreas. You brilliant man. You know? <laughs> no, much love, right? And then, and then on the other side is um, training and learning. So literally like curriculum development, which we're doing a whole lot of. Um, 
actually, quick shout out. We actually got our first contract signed, so we're getting government funding. There we go. Um, Hell yeah. Congratulations. To run a, to run a, Congratulations. a multi-year project focused on digital literacy. So wow. literally empowering people who are currently not represented on the internet or are underrepresented Canadians. So whether it's like language minorities, new immigrants, seniors, like the whole, everyone, the list goes on, right? But people that are not represented on the internet, the training that we're going to be doing over the next few years is basically empowering them through digital literacy. So talking about entrepreneurship, talking about you know what is digital literacy. So giving them the different productivity applications, the language, you know, having that conversation. So as one piece, right? But building curriculum, training the trainers, you know, doing, doing a bunch of that kind of stuff in a nutshell. That's so cool. And it's you mentioned you really kind of came cool. up with the idea for Infinitus in high school. Yeah, yeah. take us back there. Um, yeah, which is you always have an idea because I'm, I'm seeing a theme here. A, a guy from a family of teachers becomes a mentor and a coach. Mm. Who knew? After one key <laughs> defining moment to his left knee. You know? <laughs> um, but no, I mean, like, it, it, it kind of, I guess it, it's kind of like ingrained, I guess, in, like in my lived experience, if you will. Um, literally for me, I think a big piece for why, you know, Infinitus came around was just like the reality that like, literally, in my opinion, I got to say it like that, you know, but, um, and disagree with me if you, if you want, but you know, I, I really feel I like, I don't think I could it, if it, I try, <laughs> <laughs> but I really feel like the only thing that, that separates people from being like success, like successful people, um, however you coined that and people that are not successful, um, is, is the foundation that they started with which I'm sure we can all agree with, no one starts the same foundation. Absolutely. Right? So that aside, the level of support that you get as you go through whatever those transitional periods are, that dictates how successful you're going to be. Mm-hmm. Right? So if you're coming from a rural area and no one in your circle, um, you know, as a photographer or no one in your circle has been an astrophysicist, but that's what you're interested in. That's what you're fucking passionate about. The people that are in your circle are more often than not, those are the people that tell you your dreams are unrealistic and you need to figure some other shit out, right? And that's the challenge because most people go through life based on what their peers or the people in their circle, so family, whatever it is, they go through life based on what they told them that they're good at or not, Yeah. right? They have no idea about the, the internal stuff, right? And so that's why, you know, talking about infinity, like that's the foundation because like, I don't care what you want to do, but if you don't have an understanding of self or of contextual awareness, or those kind of you can't operate. You can't build a skyscraper with a shitty foundation. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, absolutely. And not just and yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm tapping out here, gang. And because this is just too good. That's so true. Yeah, I mean, we don't even freaking say anything. Yeah, just keep because talking. Because if you don't have that, <laughs> don't, growing don't up, mind these tears. Yeah, right. That that They're sense of, of self growing up. If you don't have that foundation, then you go to university where you you're just a number you still are searching for that sense of self and, and that's such a vital period of time where you need to develop that kind of thing. I'm, I'm very curious. To you hear, already know this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true too. I'm, I'm very curious as to why, not, not why you thought of it, but why did you think of that? Were you struggling internally at that time? Um, was, it, was it a football thing? Was it a Canadian in the States thing? No, it literally, I don't even know that it was so much like it wasn't even relatable to you necessarily it was just like, like yeah. it wasn't it wasn't right it so wasn't, i mean because i'm not sensing that that's why i'm asking like it, it doesn't yeah. seem like no, it, it mean, seems like, like you followed your course to its fullest and i think kind of it in part it, it was like you know having the opportunity to like like and, and not even to like i, I don't well, i hate just the, like the solo talking piece but i don't even i don't like uh, the talking about like myself in, in in that light but like in the sense of like I had the opportunity to play like at the highest level of sports. You know what I mean? Like even literally the year after knee surgery, I was invited to play at the East West all-star game coming off of a year. And I'd never played Canadian football at this, you know what I mean? At that level. So had the opportunity to continually play at the highest levels and the academic school was the highest level, right? It was like Phillips Exeter is, um, what is the best prep school in North America. It's like top three in the world or something like that before this. Um, yeah, but it's but it's like that. I didn't know it existed until I found out about it, and 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 I mean, I guess it's great branding or whatever the case for them. <laughs> but um, you know, it was kind of that. So like, I had the opportunity to be at all those levels, and I had the support. Um, not all the best support, whatever the case is, but you know what I mean. I had seen all those things, and at the same time, I watched. 
friends, family, slip through the cracks. Because the reality is that, you, you kind of mentioned as well, right? People slip through the cracks. And it starts in elementary school, mm. right? But it just it, it grows and grows and grows as you progress, right? And the reality is that people slip through the cracks their whole life. Mm. You don't know what you want to do or you're not happy with your job or whatever the case is. So you just like do shit to get by. Yeah. I want to have fun because I don't enjoy what I'm doing. So you slip through the cracks. So it was kind of like a piece of that. Um, on a personal side, right? You know, the friends and the family, like I rock with that. And and there was and still, I can't, I can't say there isn't still that support because we're doing it and there's other people too as well. But there wasn't a lot of that. There's not a lot of support. There was not, the, those conversations were not being had um, for the most part. And I mean, specifically about, especially athletes, especially like black athletes, like the, the, the pressures that you have as an athlete and then as a black athlete as well, um, to perform, to, to go through, um, are so much higher. I don't know. You can appreciate the with, with hockey and baseball, like, and all those kind of things. You get injured. Your first thought is, how quickly can I be back? Yeah. You're not worrying about how much pain or how long it's gonna last. Like after the fact, it's when can I play? When can I get back in it? Right. And so that element, but it's like you, you don't have that. Like the, that conversation is not like for yourself ever. Like how can I get back? Like I'm having a shitty day. How can I get back up? You know, what I, mean? I don't like school or like I don't like this. Like. How can I bounce back in that sense, right? Like, so it's kind of like, all right, well, there's all these things are going on. You know, I'm having these opportunities, but at the same time, like, I'm watching people slip through the cracks and even, you know, some of the other opportunities that I want. Like, uh, there has to be more, right? There have to be more ways to leverage those things. Like, with a quick anecdote, like, what? Going into grade 11, um, one of the dudes that I knew, so he was, he was going into... And of course, he's younger than me, which was even more of an aha moment. But he was coming from grade 9, going into grade 10, and a tech dude so like he'd already built his own computer so his summer from grade 9 to grade 10 like his summer from grade 9 to grade 10 he did an internship with microsoft not, not i don't bad. know anybody else ever heard of them <laughs> <laughs> i don't know anybody else that's doing that and this that's was a grade crazy. 9 and grade 10 so his summer he got to have the new xbox and play around with it because he was working for them and doing those <laughs> kind of things and but having that conversation, you're like, yo, what the fuck? Did you, what did you, what? You just work with them. You know what I mean? And on the other side, like, you know, as athletes, you know, we're putting all our time into our craft to perfect those things. And, you know, the vision is the, you know, the whatever. Is to, is to go to college or is to, you know, win a bowl game or is to play pro or whatever the case is. But on the other side of things, you know, if you have those other passions in the arts or in, you know, STEAM or STEM, whatever, anything like that, the other extracurriculars, whether you're an athlete or not, how many opportunities do you have to perfect those or to get supported or find those? Not that many for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it comes back to that support part. If you want to do something and it's excel at a high level, if it's not directly in your circle, you have to do it alone. And so the whole, true. the yeah. whole being alone, nobody wants that shit. You know what I mean? And so it's like, well, if, if people have to be alone to, to be successful and they need support, but there is no support. Like there, there's a disconnect there, mm-hmm. right? So it was like for me, I think one of the big pushes really with Infinitus was like, all right, well, just just speaking to you specifically, like there's a disconnect, and I would say I would say it's still the same, and I I would say it's probably like that in PEI. I think it's kind of like a a world um, or generation wide thing um, or global global thing that's kind of persisted as our generations have, whatever, if you will. But, like, the sense of, like, there's a disconnect between youth and each other, youth in their communities, and then youth in industry as a whole. So, like, there's less, you know, communication, less talking with youth, less, less vibing at, like, a, a big scale because we're in our bubbles, right? And then less um, the communication or kind of that connection with community, right? I mean, you could look at Nova Scotia. What What is the trend that, that has been, like, 20, 30 years for youth? They leave. Yep. You leave because you don't feel connected to what's here in the simplest in the simplest form. That's true. Great. So uh, I think we mentioned you're, you're graduating from St. Mary's in May. With uh, Are you specializing or you just, just general So business? it'll be, uh, no, no, I've got to specialize. Major so in superhero, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. waiting for that one. I'm waiting for that one. No, so it'll be a... Minor and uh, five-star recruit. <laughs> hey, yeah. yeah. Listen, I might take that course still. Um, <laughs> but no, so it'll be a, a graduation, what, in business, yeah, double major in entrepreneurship and marketing um, oh, will cool. be, I guess, the, nice the, the full kind of piece, which was good because literally, like, 
four, six months ago. Okay, yeah, like six months ago. I it wasn't gonna be the. Um, I was gonna do a double major, but I was gonna get a certificate for it was like health and wellness and society or something. It sounds it sounds good, but it because it lined up with like what I'm doing, all these kind of things. Mm. But like, no, the I took the I took the first of the like four classes you have to take and wasn't for you. Right? Was not for anyone. Mm. <laughs> Okay, one of those classes. <laughs> it was like, was like there's a lot of knowledge in the class, right. but the environment and the experience was kind of like... It wasn't super conducive to learning. Oh, it was just kind of like, I was taking this because I feel that the whole thing would be aligned with it, but we're talking with stuff that like, I don't need this certificate mm. for this. Mm. So, Didn't match up. No. Wow. But it's kind of... It's kind of like the school experience. Right. <laughs> so you're looking to graduate May. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. No, you're good. That's no, graduate right. May. Um, and is it all, Infinitus, Infinitus is all online? Like, do you want to do office space eventually or what? To... Oh, let's, you're asking all oh, the right questions. So, so graduate, I mean, the big push really is, is, to, um, is to get a physical space that we're not paying for. Um, because I think the, you know, all the work they're doing, right? So as an example... Um, over the last, like, I've been doing this work for, like, the last eight years. Close to nine. It's making me sound old and shit. Damn. <laughs> I'll say eight so years, then. Just 30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in that, right, over the last five years of doing this, so it's, it'll be four years of it being a business in April. So over the last five years, um, we've worked with, like, 2,800 people, like, from, like, elementary, junior high, high school, university, um, last year we actually were in all four of the provincial prisons. Um, got brought in. Yeah, I've never been to prison before, so that was an experience. <laughs> that was an experience. That um, is unreal. You know what I mean? So like that kind of thing. So like the whole. It really range. is limitless. And the program was called Limitless, so it lined up. It was actually it was actually perfect. Um, but no, so like be, kind of being in that position where, as I mentioned, like eight years ago, the vision was to be you know. Um, and y'all both spoke about it. The relationship is something that's missing, right? The teachers, you have a relationship with your teachers, you care, you buy into the class, right? It makes everything. Or if you're a new student at a school, if you make friends in the first month, you're more likely to have a positive experience, but you're also more likely to stay, Yeah. right? And, and so like those pieces, it, it was kind of like, you know, for for the for the next steps for Infinitus, right? It's like, okay, well, we have these things. You know, we've been in the schools, and when I started it, it was it was an elementary with the intention of building the relationship because I wanted to be from elementary all the way up through past university. But you know, we're used to cool people or great people or whatever coming in and like cutting back out of our lives. So for me, it was like I need to, I want this to be about the relationships. Okay, we're in elementary school, but then like once they hit junior high and high school, like we're graduating and we're there too. Um, which was sweet to, to, you know, we've been doing stuff with Highland Park for like the last three years. Um, but watching those kids go from grade seven to grade nine, you know what I mean? It's kind of like that, you know, and then being able to see some of them in high school doing their thing. And again, I don't know about the university side because then I, I feel old, you know what I mean? But up until <laughs> then, it's pretty cool to there. see them get older, right? But like those things, building the relationship. And so, um, you know, over all this time, as, as things have continued to grow, like as a lot of the work has been done, like in the schools, um, you know, to, to maximize like, accessibility. Um, but the challenge with that is like, you know, partnering in the schools and partnering in the community is like schools are not safe spaces for most people. Right. Very especially, true. especially if you don't fuck with school. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so, okay, well, we're like, okay, well, if a lot of the stuff we do is in the schools or like in the communities, like there needs to be a safe space for like a happy medium that whether you're in school, outside of school, you can still link up with people and kind of continue that conversation. Like I mentioned with Exeter, Right outside of the classrooms, we were talking on the paths, or talking in the dorms, or whatever the case is, and it wasn't just just about that, but it was to know that the conversation does continue and it can continue. So the space is a next step. Um, and I don't want to pay for it because, like, why no, should we have that. to pay for it? Right? Just so run it over your apartment <laughs> like we do. <laughs> yeah. so no, I think we still pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're not then paying for a studio space that's already paid for. <laughs> How can we no, fair, fair. <laughs> no, no, we have to finesse. So it'd be like a partnership because basically the big push for the space is so obviously some a little bit like for office, like for our core team and stuff, um, and like a boardroom, you know, stuff like that. But the most of it, the emphasis is for like a community hub. Mm -hmm. So in the sense of literally being able to bring, so, you know, not just Halifax kids or Dartmouth kids or whatever, but being able to literally do so, as I say, so we do summits or, or as an example, we did like a transition to high school summit two years ago. 
and I was in Jamaica last year, so or else it would, would have been last year too. But we brought in, I think it ended up being seven different junior highs. So students from seven different junior highs, and it filled up, so we had to do two different days of it. Yeah. But we brought them all together, and we hosted at St. Mary's because I have to get them out of their environment, right? So if they're from Spryfield, or if they're from Dartmouth, or if they're from Halifax, most likely they haven't all met before, even if they're doing the same stuff, and they haven't had those conversations. Okay, well, what are the pressures heading into high school? Right, but getting them into space that they are already a little bit uncomfortable about, but also getting them out of their comfort zone is very important, right? To see that university is a tangible thing. Mm -hmm. To see that there are other kids out there that are my peers, maybe some of the people in my support systems, but I'm seeing and I'm hearing them talk about the pressures, talking about being worried and talking about wanting to make new friends or whatever, right? So getting them to see their peers and themselves in a different light is important, but it can't always be done in your comfort zone or in your physical space, right? So having a space outside of that where we can have our large scale events where we host, you know, stuff with 200 people, 300 people in the community, like at a space like that, you know, that, that's one of the next steps. Um, but then aside from that really is just like scaling everything. So as I mentioned, you know, we have a, a province wide, you know, a contract that we're going to be doing, but hoping to, to pull in a few more. So waiting on a couple of the other proposals, but basically kind of scaling that. So doing work, obviously, you know, continuing the stuff we're doing, like in the schools, universities and community groups, right. um, and actually getting pulled in to do some stuff with the government too, like on the, more on the training side with, um, whether it's training teachers or dealing with some stuff, kind of practitioners in the hospitals and stuff like that. So like scaling things up. Mm -hmm. um, You're in educational mode, kind of. Hey, you know, well, one let, piece, one piece of it. You letting know, everyone know. Yeah. It's limitless. It's everything. No, so, no, no. I'm just <laughs> suggesting like where you're at with the business. I mean, yeah, you're yeah. really looking to spread that yeah, name. That and point, kind yeah. Of, yeah, that's what I mean. Like you're, you're really looking to share your story, which is which is amazing. That's that's a great scalable approach. Um, do you plan on taking it full time? Like. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's been, it's, well, it's been. I, I'm I'll just say trying to like, figure it out. Hey, <laughs> if no. we had all the answers, what's he sitting here for? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, but no. Um, it's it's pretty much been like full time the whole time, mm -hmm. just without like the actual time element. You know what I mean? It's See? been the it's been the priority. Um, you know, even when like football was there. And so it was difficult. Like it was hard as hell because I was like, you know what I mean? Back to the athletic academics and athletics. I'm like, okay, I have to do well at all of these. You know what I mean? I need to get A's and I need to, you know what I mean? Still be the best at my craft. And then I need to make sure Infinis is going well. Right. So then it was like, all right, I can't have all of them up there because it's just making them all shit. Like mm -hmm. not shit, but you know what I mean? I can't be There's the only best so much at time each of them. Day. Yeah. And, and, and so it was kind of like, all right, well, let me pull, you know, adjust the pegs a little bit. And so, you know, fitness really has been kind of the main priority in that, um, you know, hasn't been able to get more time. But it's like since um, as things progress, you know, the momentum and everything continues to build with Infinitus. Um, so that way, like the time that I have been able and it hasn't necessarily changed. I mean, this last year I've had probably the most time that I've had, but I've also been the busiest. Um and being used to being busy, so it's been a, a kind of a different adjustment, but um, really it's just to scale everything up because like, we're doing so much of the work. And I mean, you know, from the business side of things, there's a lot of other things like, you know, behind the scenes, like, you know, personal, professional branding and development. Like, that's why I got flown to Jamaica and, and uh, I spent three months down there because I was a Queen Elizabeth scholar um, and I was chosen as a scholar. Basically, well, QES is like, I guess, quick plug for them, but it's basically it's a... Um, it's bringing together all of the different Commonwealth countries in an opportunity. So if you're a student from one of the Commonwealth countries and your university is kind of enrolled in the program, you can do an exchange program if you're selected. Um, and so I had the opportunity to go to Jamaica. And there were a couple other ones, but Jamaica to focus specifically on um, ICT, so like information, communication, and tech. But basically what it actually was was I got flown down there to do my thing in that ecosystem and, and get a little bit more knowledge on ICT. But, um, no, I think that that's kind of a big thing, really just scaling it um, and, and focusing on those pieces because um, where there's so much going on behind the scenes, like the, the branding and the mark, like a whole lot of business pieces. Um, and over the next, you know, six months, the big push, like I said, is the space and those other things. But, I mean, um, the, the overall vision is there's going to be a few more companies rolling out. Um, a lot of the work that right now is under kind of one um, – 
organization. Umbrella. Yeah, yeah, one organization with Infinitus, the Academy, um, is just refining it so that way we have the portfolio to already show that we do the work. So my approach to this has been like Infinitus is an umbrella, you know, since the last eight years, but it's more so building the foundation that I was talking about to make sure that um, you your know, skyscraper's sturdy. Make sure that we're good to go because I've already oh, been nice. doing the work. Um, so scaling that. But the other piece that's really important, and I will sh- um, shout out this part because um, one of the next pieces probably for a nonprofit, but the element that we focus on really, and, and that's one of the biggest pieces why we kick ass in the way that we do with Infinitus is because it's empowering people and we're meeting them where they are. So one of our elements in focusing not just on transitions or emotional intelligence, um, but is on peer-based learning, right? Just, you know, quick pause to emphasize on the peer-based learning part, right? So as a, an anecdote, just to ground that part, as kids, I guarantee, I, I know, because I do this all the time, or I did it all the time, but my mother would say one thing, and I wouldn't listen, but my coach or somebody else would say the exact same thing, and it would click like that. Yeah. Right? That whole peer dynamic, as, you know, as kids or as we get older, we evaluate our perceived value, our quality of life, our existence, whatever we're doing is right or wrong is based on what our peers are doing same as adults same as you get older like, you know that's why adults don't don't care about what we think he was saying that because we're not their peers the other day we're in how the kids will listen you'll say the exact same things that the parents would say but they'll listen to you yeah we we, we find it like my coaches and i uh find it baffling i guess like this we, we call it the 96 percent rule right they take in 96 percent of the things we say as truth so you have to be very mindful of what you're saying, and that, they're that always too, yeah. they're always looking at you, and like they're so malleable that they just want to soak it up like a sponge, right? Like, and their parents are saying the exact same things, their teachers are saying the exact same things, but unfortunately, they're like sixty four percent and fifty six percent. So yeah. it's it's very interesting to me, but I'm now I'm aware to the fact that it's due to their surroundings, right? all of their peers are, are there and they want to be cool in front of their peers. They want to fall in line in front of their, you know, fellow athletes that if we say something and it resonates with one kid, well, the rest will fall, fall yeah. in. Right. right. And that, and that's the key because it's a disconnect, right? When you go into a school, right, you're, you're in this system where we, we have to focus on there's one answer and the person that has the answer is the person that's in the front of the classroom. So you, yeah, the, the, the wealth and knowledge that your peers actually bring, right, which is for, for for the most part a lot more in terms of experience, that kind of stuff, than the professor, you miss all that, mm. right? And so, like, for me, the biggest thing, like, and what we're doing with Infinitus is, <clears throat> and, like, this is and not even bachelor school because it's just the fact, like, comparing Exeter to, to, to SMU as an example, right? Both supposed to be, like, very international. SMU totes that it's, like, 50% for the business school international students, right? And that's great. But like the reality is that when you have students in a classroom, and I gave the, I, had, I had to do a speech in class too about it, but um, like it, teaching like the conformity piece, right? So if everyone's supposed to come into this school and like SMU has the answer, right? SMU Business School has the answer. But if the answer is in the fact that it's the diversity that makes the school rich, right? And and in business, understanding how to operate in diversity is what will make you successful because of those perspectives. When you come into a space that has the diversity, yet you don't hear the diversity in the space because you're supposed to learn from one person who doesn't have that perspective and doesn't have that experience or insights, you're missing out on a whole lot. Most of the value. <laughs> Drop that damn can mic over there, Can I there, have would my you? mind back, please? Woo. Right? So, so, is, shifting, so yeah. shifting that to empower the people actually in the space because we learn from our peers. But if you don't get to have any of the insights or any of the knowledge from our peers, what learning are we doing? We're just following what actions we see, whether they're right or wrong, right? So changing the narrative in that sense, like in the classroom or, or in the work that we're doing, right, is empowering them to understand who the fuck is around them, where they're coming from on a, on a personal or on an individual level, whatever the case is, right, depending on how much vulnerability is, but understanding that. They are their own piece, whether they're best friends with somebody, grew up in the same house, their journey is going to look different because their understanding is different. So their needs are different. Yeah. But if they don't understand that they're different than this person or this person, and that they can leverage those things, right, then it goes back to what we were talking about before. 
You're never playing to your strengths. And when you don't play to your strengths, you can't win. In any sport or in any business deal, we're taught to play to your strengths. Absolutely. No question. Um, Something we've been trying to do a bit more, Mark and myself, I'm very curious to know if there are any immediate lessons that you could share with our fellow listeners about starting your own venture. Um, Easily. Do it. That would be like the... (laughs) The simplest thing. Um, That's exactly what I was. Looking for. I mean, so, for like a you. like a like a like a tailored like a contextual based answer, I guess. Um, like you have to know what your interests are, or like what your past. Like you know what I mean. Like you could start anything, sure. Um, but it has to make sense to you, right? Yeah. So like I guess like in the the longer answer, like I, I feel. Any solving or any problem that needs solving, right, is a good place to start for those things. But a lot of the like the reality for these things is like people start um, initiatives because like, it, you have to operate based on faith because you are like in what we're talking about, right? It's a lonely ass thing. You're starting your own business. Mm-hmm. The supports are, for the most part are not in place. So you're going to be operating on yourself and whoever's immediately around you, right? friends or family that can help out or, or those kind of things. But you have to start it, and it has to make sense for you. So if it's something that you are battling through or have battled through or something that like is a real tangible thing, that is probably one of the most important ways to know that you have kind of a business that you can work with is if it's tangible or if you know that because you're not just operating from what is the customer's experience or what is this theory, right? And, and that's what we, going back to the school part, we, there's too much, and even in the business side, there's too much emphasis on theory. Theory only works when you don't apply action, right? You can, in a game plan, like, you can go in and play whatever team you want. And in theory, your game plan will be perfect. You'll stop them every time. They won't score, and you'll score every time. But you have to be able to adjust and adapt. So in, in, that, in that sense, like, you have in a business, figure out what it is that obviously makes sense or what you want to start, but you have to do it so that you can get that feedback but like it has to be tangible so I, I think like in terms of starting a business i think the best thing you can do is do it um and pay attention to feedback because like there's like i think like it's a north american thing um and i feel like it comes a lot from like the condition that we talked about of like going through the system for long enough um did we touch on that yeah, yeah, just a little, just, just a great time. You know, but I, you have to think outside the box, right? Because like, um, it is great advice. Yeah, I, I don't like for me. Like, I, I don't know failure is like people are like, oh, first attempt in learning. Or I truly feel like you cannot fail. I don't believe in the world fail. Like to me, failure is literally not trying something. If you've done something and you messed up, you didn't fail because you learned. So like, I guess it could be like the first attempt in learning. But I truly believe like. Failure is only the act of not doing something. Mm-hmm. A dumb question is the question that's not answered or not asked, right? So in terms of like speaking to what you're saying earlier, mm-hmm. like I didn't want to put my hand up, especially in math class, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm like, I don't like this shit. And if I don't know, I know a lot of other things. So I want to, I have to keep up that whole I know things. You know what I mean? I don't want to show a little bit of weakness or whatever. In business and that, you have to act. You have to try it out, right? Like I, it's just speaking to, I guess, with the infinitive stuff, the vision that I had eight years ago, nine years ago, like all the stuff I'm doing now is not new. It's stuff that I pictured literally eight years ago, nine years ago. I had to put all the work in though to do it, all of the action to do it, to get to the point where when I'm having a conversation about, you know, with somebody, it's not, this is the theory behind what I'm talking about. I can talk to you about the actual facts of what I'm doing because I'm doing it. I'm in the work, right? And so I think like in terms of if, if anyone wants to start a business, you know, outside of the, you know, that initial piece of like just doing it and like I make sure that it makes sense and like isn't just shit, whatever. Um, but like you have to fail fast, obviously. But like you need to be focused and, and, and I'm probably more on the, like everything is a spectrum, but I'm more on the action and theory. I'm probably like all the way on the action side and like theory makes sense. You have to have it. You have to be able to evaluate things and, and, and adjust and plan and, and, and reflect. Very important, very important. But there's nothing to reflect on if you don't act, right? And, and in everything, especially in business, like the fastest changing pieces of, of our lives, right? It happens in business. Tech is from business. Education, like, you know, I, I guess to, in a long roundabout way, but to, to further ground it, like in the class, you know, you have culture, you have economy, um, and you have education, right? And education and culture are, are generally speaking the slowest things to change, 
economy is is kind of that lever. All three of them are levers of change, but economy is is the one that changes at the, at the quickest rate, and it can influence the other ones. Obviously, they you know can influence it as well. But with something like the economy changing, right? With our you know the the, the cultural or the social norms, right? Tech, every like everything, all like our, our our whole experience, right? All these these changes are happening like that. So if you want to jump in and you want to be about something, anything, whatever it is, you, you have to start it right away. Because if you have an idea, like everyone has ideas, everyone has great ideas, but people don't act on them. And they talk about, oh, I had this, but I didn't think it. You didn't act on it. That's all it was. You, you have to act on your ideas because if you don't, someone else will yep. and you'll miss the mark. Right. But if you act, take a stab at it and you're a little bit off, fine, adjust it. Right. Like literally just just to ground that because like it's just action like the only thing that matters is action like feedback is very important absolutely because you can you know make make the more decisive movements but like i would have never been you know on team canada if i didn't train i had to be about the action first the theory of being the best player in the province or in the country or all those things is great but i had to put the action in of training i had to put the work in of training so in business have your theory have your idea and put the action in until the theory is also part of that is what I would say in, in, a, in a long roundabout way. I think there's a lot of people listening that are writing down everything you Honestly. just said. So that was an excellent that's, answer. That's awesome. All right, I think we'll uh, call things there. That was an uh, incredible, incredible conversation. Andreas, we appreciate you coming out. Ben, is there anything you uh, wanted to add? I mean, I, I feel as though you're a fantastic human. Uh, just in- incredible what you've been able to start with right i mean starting out with infinitus and where where you're ultimately heading the sky is the limit for you uh you've got that strong foundation you alluded to and you're incredibly well spoken super driven i mean you're a perfect candidate to have on this this podcast and we we can't thank you enough for sharing your stories um to us that means the world and i'm sure there's more than a handful of listeners that, that could share that perspective or that view and, and really, you know, harness it and use it to, to their good. So I'm sure that the, the future is nothing but, you know, blue skies for you. So Absolutely. thanks again for coming on. Much appreciated. I, I appreciate uh, it. Of course, yeah. I, I would be in 100% agreement on, on that. Yeah, that was... That was awesome. Like, I mean, the time flew by, and you're a great speaker. I'm sure you know you've been doing it for a while now, and uh, we can't wait. This is what we normally do. We can't wait for to have you on for uh, episode two, and maybe even three. Your tires will it. still be inflated about up there it. by then. The yeah, amount absolutely. we pumped you up, but would you uh, man, would oh you man. say this was exclusively Dre? Oh, this was exclusively Dre. This one was. Awesome. I wanted to call you 3,000 a couple times. Hey, well, he's no next outcast, episode. though. Oh. <laughs> oh, how long have you been sitting on that? Since you said Andre 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> well right. played. Oh, my Free. God. All right, I think we'll, uh, we'll end on that note, folks. Uh, for Love Brand you New View, I'm Mark Woodrow. I'm Ben Brammer. See you next week. Cheers, folks. With the same old I was the same.